Once upon a time, boys and girls, there was something called the roadshow attraction or engagement. And roadshow engagements were opulent, big budget films, usually quite lengthy, and they were exhibited in specially selected theaters, usually in widescreen and stereo sound. And they were hard ticket attractions, which meant through the mail or at the box office, you would buy a ticket, get a reserved seat, and that seat would be yours on a particular day. Almost as if you were attending a movie in a legitimate theater for a play or a musical. So let's start with Funny Girl. And this is what I would like to talk to you about today, is these very special uh, mementos for roadshow attractions the souvenir mo movie program. It's almost as if, again, these were legitimate theater experiences. So as you would go to uh, a Broadway show and get a playbill, you would go to a roadshow attraction, and in the lobby of the movie theater, specially prepared and very elaborate uh, movie programs uh, or souvenir programs had been produced to be sold. Usually, usually only a dollar each. So quite the souvenir for anyone attending a movie, uh, a roadshow engagement. Uh, so the, as I said, the first example he, we have here is Funny Girl. And this will give you an example or an idea of how elaborate these movie programs were. Great, beautiful, often color photography, behind-the-scenes information on the movie itself, stunning photography, and the writing that accompanied this beautiful photography was also quite beautiful and gave a lot of behind-the-scenes information that wasn't available anywhere else. So you see, here we have at the beginning of the Funny Girl, Girl program a whole big article about Barbara Streisand herself. And as some of you already know, this was Barbara Streisand's first movie, and indeed she won the Oscar right out of the gate. So lots of information for people who had not seen her on stage, but were seeing her for the first time in this roadshow engagement. Omar Sharif was the leading man, so lots of information about him as well. And, of course, the movie was directed by the famed and much acclaimed movie director, William Wyler. So a whole section on him as well. So the idea with these programs is that you would go to this very special presentation of a very special movie, and then you could buy these programs, and when you went home, you could relive the experience by learning even more about how the movie was made and share it with your friends. Now this Funny Girl program itself gives you a wonderful idea of how beautiful and elaborate these programs were and are. Hello Dolly, Barbara Streisand's second film came to the screen. Again, very opulent, very lavish, lengthy, uh, an adaptation of a big, splashy, and very successful Broadway show. In fact, this is one of the most successful Broadway shows ever. And this program reflected that. Now, one caveat, this whole video might seem to be about Barbara Streisand. It's not. This is just an example, or another example, that happens to star Barbara Streisand. But let's focus on this movie program. Look at the opulent photography. It's truly stunning. Where else would you see photography like this? And then, even more important, the behind-the-scenes information about the production, the location, the costumes, the art direction a truly wonderful experience in itself. And again, not only the beautiful photography, but also the writing and the secrets that are revealed. 
these movie souvenir programs are an experience in themselves and something that made the roadshow engagements very special. Now you might think that based on the first two examples I've shown you, all roadshow engagements were musicals, but they were not. Very famously, uh, biblical epics such as Ben-Hur, one of the most famous of the roadshow engagements, The Greatest Story Ever Told, King of Kings, all of these Ten Commandments, all of these were roadshow engagements. There were also military epics such as The Longest Day and Torah, 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 roadshow engagements. Dramas such as Hawaii, starring Julie Andrews and, Mac and Max von Sydow. All of these were roadshow engagements and they all had accompanying uh, movie programs. One of the most famous of the roadshow engagements and one of the most successful was from the 1950s, 1956, Around the World in 80 Days. Often uh, an aspect of the roadshow engagements were that they were produced in widescreen, especially as television came to prominence. They were produced in widescreen to attract people away from television. Here was an experience you could only get in a movie theater. So these movies were specially produced to be seen on an epic scale, on mammoth screens in specially selected theaters. And then you could buy uh, the movie souvenir program and take it home. An interesting thing about Around the World in 80 Days, its movie souvenir program, to make it even more special, as perhaps you can tell by looking at this, it's in hardcover. The first two I showed you were softcover. This is hardcover. Look at inside. You might be able to tell. These are the rave reviews for this very famous, very acclaimed movie. Interestingly, making this a little different is the first part of this movie souvenir program is a retelling, almost in a storybook form, of the story of Around the World in 80 Days. Before we get into the photography, and the behind-the-scenes uh, details. And one thing very famous about Around the World in 80 Days, in fact, it sort of uh, created the concept for this Todd A.O. Uh, production, the cameo appearance. So it says here, cameo biographies of 47 stars in the cast. Some of the appearances were just seconds long. Others had more uh, meaty roles to go along with the stars, David Niven and Shirley MacLaine. But uh, the whole idea is that in addition to the magnificent scenery, the travelogue, the uh, cinematography in this widescreen uh, process, you also had s stars such as Frank Sinatra, who is only seen in this one shot in the movie, and Marlena Dietrich, and so many more. So, one thing that this, this particular movie souvenir program did is that it allowed you, after the movie, to say, now wait a minute, I think I recognize that actor in that performance or in that role, but who was it? So, here we have all 47 stars in these little cameos telling you who they are and what role they played. More stars than you could possibly list. John Gielgud, Hermione, G G Hermione Gingold, Trevor Howard, Glynis Johns, famous to Disney fans for playing Mrs. Banks in Mary Poppins. On and on it goes. Buster Keaton, Beatrice Lilly, Edward R. Murrow, who introduced the film. All of them are uh, detailed in this movie souvenir program. As you, you, unusual and unique as this movie is, so is the movie souvenir program. And then, uh, lots of different uh, details behind the camera, detailing the Todd A.O. widescreen process, etc., etc. So this is really uh, almost a book. Not just a program, it really is a book. 
that tells you lots of detailed information. One of the most elaborate of these programs that were produced. In the 1960s, certainly My Fair Lady was one of the biggest, the most acclaimed, the most awarded, and again, can you tell? This is hardcover. So a true book. Uh, I hope you like pink, because Warner Brothers seemed to decide that pink was the My Fair Lady color. <laughs> uh, we have the famous ad art that was used in the, uh, the movie poster, the, on the cover of the soundtrack album, very famous, uh, displaying the stars, Rex Harrison and Audrey Hepburn and some of the action and other uh, characters from the movie on the back. Very classy, the Warner Brothers shield. Now, I'll not be opening this because uh, my personal copy right here uh, has been so lovingly opened so many times that the binding has come loose. So if I open it up, the pages will come out. But we'll show you some of the interior shots. Now, certainly one of the most famous movies of all time, The Sound of Music, was a roadshow engagement. And luckily, the only version that has ever been shown has been the uh, lengthy and elaborate and uh, lovingly uh, produced version that was presented in Roadshow. This was released in 1965 and ran for years as a roadshow engagement. Some theaters showed nothing but The Sound of Music for years, twice a day. And here is the souvenir program, which is a delightful reminder of that era and that experience. What more is there to be said about The Sound of Music? Again, this movie souvenir program with its incredible photography presents a storybook like version of uh, the story of the movie as the first half of, of this booklet. Here we have the wonderful puppet show The Lonely Goat Herd. And the second half is about the production. The creation of the show. Again, a Broadway show originally. Here's Rodgers and Hammerstein. How the Broadway show came to be. And the songs that they created. And then the production of the movie. With some of the cast here. Biographies of them if you, if you would want to know more about who was in it. Here's information about the puppets and Robert Wise, the acclaimed director. And on and on it goes. So these are just a few examples of these wonderful uh, souvenirs from a bygone era that not only include this incredible photography, but this incredible information that you can't find anywhere else about the creation of these classic films. Uh, interestingly enough, one movie that could have been a roadshow engagement and wasn't was Walt Disney's Mary Poppins, for you Disney fans. And I'm sure some of you are tuning in hoping that I'm going to talk a little bit about Disney. Well, I'm talking a little bit about Disney now. But leave it to Disney to do it right, because they didn't do uh, one souvenir program that had something for the children and something for the adults. Disney has always did it right. They did both. A traditional souvenir program, such as I'm talking about, and then one more geared toward children with a storybook adaptation. In today's world, and probably for the last few decades, the thing that we have that is most like these movie souvenir programs are actual magazines, usually not sold in the theaters, but sold on the, on the stands. So here are a few recent examples. Here we have, and this is in plastic, so I hope you can see it. Here we have 
Spider-Man, the official movie souvenir magazine. This is from the version starring Tobey Maguire. So this is the same idea, but in magazine form. We have the official movie magazine for Toy Story 3. And more recently, we have the official movie magazine for Incredibles 2. But when we see these uh, magazines for a Steven Spielberg film, a Disney film, a Pixar film, their, uh, their predecessors are these um, official movie souvenir programs that come out of the whole roadshow experience. And uh, whether it's from uh, 1968 or uh, 2018, they are really a wonderful way to re-experience and learn more about these movies that we love. I hope you've enjoyed this look at some of the movie souvenir programs that are in my collection. Our next uh, video will feature a special guest, Mrs. Y.Y. Fritch from Fishigan, Michigan. She will be here to discuss the pros and cons of entering mail order sweepstakes. So I know you won't want to miss that. So please join us again here on Tolgywood TV. And remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me.